actually made me deaf. Hot Rod Rick's hot dog. We're in the hot dog. I'm not even joking, I am. That is. That has blown my socks off. <laughs> All right, uh, today's video is with this, which is Ricky's, come here Rick, big Rick. This is Ricky's hot, I keep saying hot dog because you're wearing a hot dog tee. This is a hot rod. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Rick is the coolest person on the planet and has just finished building this. I think we need to start off with like one thing, which is who just decides to build a hot rod? Out of like all the stuff we normally build, like cars, why did you build a hot rod? Uh... My dad, I guess. Yeah, your dad's got a yeah, business, isn't it? Yeah, dad's got like a little hot rod shop where he builds stuff like this for a living. Basically, he had this body flat packed. We bolted all the panels together. He had a chassis lying around, so we chopped that up, put the body on it, and then it's what you see now. <laughs> so when Pretty you much. Say, when you say flat packed? It was literally like... This was a panel on its own, the door was on its own, this back panel, and then the other rear quarter panel, which is all like on a pallet. Oh, up. Ikea build? Yeah. What is it originally? A Ford Model A sedan. What year? 1928. 1928? Yeah. So five years time, it's a hundred year old car. <laughs> <laughs> that is mental. <laughs> it's pretty old. You said it earlier. Is this the first car they ever made? Yeah, isn't Model A like? No, nah, Model T. Uh, Model, Model T. T. Model T was the first like mass production Ford. Where was it from? Where did you import it from? Uh, originally, it was a dad's friend. They found it in a field in Canada. I was Canadian. A picture here of it in the field. He like stripped all apart and imported it over, and then my dad bought it off him probably like ten years ago. And it's just been sat waiting for you to build yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. And did he just say, "Yeah, Rick, this one's yours"? I just said, "Oh, when can I build my own car?" And he's like, "Oh, you can use that sedan if you want." He's like, I've got a body, I've got a chassis, I've got axles. All you need to get is an engine and put it together. So all I've had to buy really is the engine and all the little kind of shiny parts to go with it. So what's original still on it then? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Uh, body, chassis, these front suspension arms are original and then the original springs. Considering it's a hundred years old, I know you've obviously put loads of modern stuff on it. Yeah. It's still a car. So the yeah. three pedals, four wheels, yeah. radiator, like wing mirrors, yeah. suspension. It's pretty gnarly how like they haven't really changed that much, if you know what I mean. No, the basics are still there. Like I reckon only in the last 15, 20 years, cars have actually gotten mental. Yeah, yeah. especially all like the electrics, hybrid yeah. stuff. So I reckon we'll get into some specifics now, yep. but obviously the engine, the thing that you had to buy yeah, is not thing. standard. No. Um, originally it would have come with like an inline four flathead, replaced it with this, I think it's about 5.4 litre Chevy V8. Do you know what blows my mind about American V8s? When you call them like small block, you think, oh, they're small. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like five litre. Yeah. I don't know what makes a small block and a big block besides. This is a small block. They do it in cubic inches. Yeah. This is a 327. And okay. then the small block Chevy went up to like 350. And then when you get to 380, you go up to like a massive piston size. So you've got a bigger block, bigger heads. So that's like, the heads on a big block are like that wide compared to this. How come you chose small block for this then? It was pretty cheap to be fair. Nice. Like we got the engine and gearbox for 800 pound. What? But then we found out that all the piston rings were snapped off and scored up the bore. So we had to get a full engine machine job, which ended up being more expensive than buying like a crate engine. <laughs> These heads are aftermarket, so they flow better than the standard heads. And it's also got a bit of a, a bit of a cam in it. It does sound a bit bit choppy, doesn't it? Yeah. Amazing. So what is what are these from? So this is an original like small block Chevy that was used in the 60s. Oh, okay. So they were used in loads of cars, weren't they? Yeah, this engine would have come from something like a Corvette. So it's like the fastest 327 that come in factory car. And they say that from factory, it's like 280 to 350 horsepower, ranging between there with this block. So, so with your cam and... Yeah, it should be about 350, hopefully. 
which in a car that probably weighs a lot less than a ton, 350 horsepower is quite a lot. Yeah. Hey, as well. I'm gonna do a giveaway. Cause I want people to comment. I want everyone to comment what they think of this. Comment some questions, comment like what you reckon. And the winner is gonna win one of these hot dog teas that Rick is. Hot dog Rick. Hot dog Rick. Hot dog rock. Hot dog, hot rod Rick. There you go. A tongue twister. Hot rod Rick who heats hot dogs. <laughs> that is the winner from the last video as well. So yeah, drop us a comment down below because this thing is mental. You've obviously got some crazy carb on there. Yeah, basically it's an Edelbrock carb, Edelbrock intake manifold. Um, that's pretty much all the like, I guess you'd call it performance stuff apart from the cam. And then the rest of it's just like shiny bolt on parts. Yeah. So we've got the fin valve covers, the fin air filter, the fin water pump, just to keep it like, I don't know, I guess like a period correct look. It's surprising like what stuff you can use, just like universal car building parts. Like that's an alternator that people would use on like, I don't know, a kit car or a little Didn't you say it was like 60 quid on eBay? Yeah, it's like 60 pound off eBay, brand new. <laughs> just a Denzo, whatever it is as well. Yeah, Denzo. Loads of little stuff like that. Like these headlights, they're just like, random seven inch headlights that you could use in i don't know an old defender with round headlights yeah also you've done all the the braiding like all the braided lines all the electrics yeah, all, and stuff. basically all the wires that you can see on show so the ignition leads these little wires that go into the alternator i just wanted to use like a vintage look the car's not built like a period correct car is like it's super low like a super heavy roof chop but yeah all like the fundamentals to it, that's still keeping it like traditional, yeah. correct. I guess from that, we should move on to the roof chop. Yeah. Cause that is probably the most noticeable thing actually when you see it, isn't it? Yeah. It's had a five inch roof chop. So basically where you can see these wild lines, there would have been like five inches in there. So you've cut the doors in half as well, haven't you? Yeah. So you cut all the way across, yeah. lift the roof off, cut like a five inch strip all the way around the whole body. Yeah. Put it back on top and then weld it up. And then I was saying earlier, like obviously all of these are pretty straight. So if you chop it, it's just going to drop down quite nice. Yeah. But then you were saying back here. Yeah, where, where it's had such like a radical roof chop, if you do like a little three inch chop, you don't have to do this, but the radius of this is a lot bigger than the radius of this. So when you rest it on, it lines up here and it lines up here, but there's like, an overbite, I guess you could call it. Yeah. So this top half overhangs the bottom. So, so that's just, why you got the slit. Yeah, there. a little slit. Like a relief and cut. Like heated it and shrunk it to try and get it to close up and match the best as possible. You're not going to paint? No, I'm just going to let it rust out. Nice. And then speaking of not painting, all this um, sign writing and stuff, this has always been on it, hasn't it? Yeah, the story was that in the 60s, it was used outside like a Ford dealer to advertise a new car and apparently, the body was up on like a big post outside the dealership. <laughs> so you would like drive down the highway and see this car up on a post saying buy a brand new 1960s V8 Ford. And then it would. Oh, so they weren't trying to sell this. They were no, trying to sell trying. the new Fords. Yeah. yeah. This was 20s, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Then. This yeah. is 40 years old. Yeah. So oh imagine God, yeah. you think that would be like seeing an E30 outside a BMW garage. You can't really see it now because it's been chopped out, but. It said ride in style, something by a 1964 Ford. Is this, this was you, wasn't it? Or was it not? Yeah, this is like the visor that they have. And the one that come with the car was all rotten and it was pretty unsavable. So we made this out of like a bit of sheet metal. How the hell did you get the rust to look similar to the rust back there? Um, you piss on it. Don't like to admit it, but I use that like rust paint stuff. <laughs> but it's the only way of getting it to look proper. It, I, did, I thought it was original. No, it's like that rust look paint. It looks sick. So well Another question. Yep. You've, you did a little story on your Instagram when you were building those headers, didn't you? Oh yeah. So yeah, you made the exhaust myself. I mean, Ricky's pretty much done a lot of the fab stuff here, but these exhausts he did himself, TIG welded, stainless steel, and they are so loud. Just real quick, because we could be here for like all day. Yeah. The suspension stuff you've done, all the mounts and the brackets and stuff. Yeah. That was all custom made. Yeah. Because it looks factory. Like, I'm guessing those engine mounts you made. Yeah, made the engine mounts. You made the suspension mounts, like all these brackets and stuff, right? Yeah, the front shock mounts and like they integrate like this. in with the headlight as well. 
So it's not just a shock mount, it's also the headlight mount. You can't see it, but the biggest thing to the chassis is, originally it was just one flat, like two rails going all the way back. Yeah. But where I wanted it so low at the back, if you look at the floor here, where it's a lot higher up than the bottom of the floor, that oh, yeah. basically follows the chassis. So the chassis can oh. cut and raised up. I think it's something like 15 inches tall. So you can get those wheels to sit higher. Yeah. We couldn't find anywhere to fit the fuel tank apart from behind the rear axle. So yeah. under this panel, there's a fuel tank which goes like the width of the body and from there down to like level with the bottom. Yeah. How would we fill it up without having like a stupid hose going like all the way up to the top? Yeah. So I can't this idea of hiding it behind the number plate. <laughs> it just pops up and then you unscrew your filler. That is so annoyingly cool. And then away you go. Fill it up. So sick. I guess the only other like custom thing are the rear lights as well. Because they're not factory. Yeah, they're definitely not factory, are they? No. They're from a 59 Cadillac. That's cool. So they're not some eBay job. No, they're from a 59 Cadillac. Just looks fast, I think. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. does. But yeah, the back view oh, is it looks like, crazy. it doesn't look like a car. It's like, ridiculous. I guess a few other things like tires, they're American, Firestone, not the usual size, are no, they? So they're not radial, so they're cross plies. I don't know what the difference is. Yeah. The way they're constructed. So you, you have to have an inner tube in them as well. Okay, yeah. They're 750 by 16, which the 750 means seven and a half inches wide. And then on the front, it's got, it's like a staggered wheel. So 16's on the back and 15's on the front. But the tire difference is mental, like. Yeah, the 750 is huge. Yeah. And you said they're, they're quite expensive, those rear tires, aren't they? Yeah, like 250 pound a tire. Yeah. What's this? Uh, that's the old filler cap. So the fuel tank on an original car would sit under here. Ah, uh, okay, cool. And you've moved it to the back? Yeah, because well, we've had to chop all that out to get the engine to fit. Oh yeah, this is the other thing, actually. No I spotted room. this a minute ago. I was like, this engine isn't meant for this car, but that bulkhead line fits that motor perfectly. And here, and then you made that. Yeah, we had to make all the firewall. So we made it kind of fit the best as we can. All right, interior. <laughs> yeah. Um, What's, um, well, it's quite simple, but. Yeah, two seats. What it's, seats are they? It's the only thing I didn't make for the car. They're just some eBay, like bomber style. Yeah. Seats. So they would have had seats similar to this in like old fighter jets in like World War II planes. When they were building hot rods in the 50s, they would take those seats from airplanes and put them in their cars it looks cool it does look cool they're actually not that uncomfortable either are they no they're actually pretty comfy <laughs> like you look at it and you're like that is hell but then yeah. i sat in it it's actually but just for nice. a metal seat it's really comfy doors they work what have you got bit of insulation sound deadening do the windows work yeah just one yes they do <laughs> and this is just normal shed glass isn't it it's not, it's proper laminated glass, but yeah, it pretty much is. <laughs> Shed glass. <laughs> it's not that stuff that smashes into a million pieces though, like car No, it is glass. laminated front and back. Yeah. So it is made for a car, but yeah. It's yeah. greenhouse. You just take it to your local glass place and you're like, oh, I want some of this please. And then they cut it for you. Because obviously with the roof chop, you yeah, couldn't use the original glass. Yeah, the glass had to be a lot smaller than originally would have been. What do these numbers mean? Um, that's for when I erase it next month that was the coolest this thing you've month, ever said actually <laughs> is all of this stock the floor no i've made all the floor <laughs> this is hard work <sighs> okay moon eyes wheel yeah moon eye steering wheel dash is aftermarket obviously in there yeah uh, socal which is like a speed shop it's the same as moon eyes been around since the 40s making like aftermarket performance parts for hot rods nice so you got volts yeah. Oil temp, RPM, speed, speed fuel, water. Yeah. You got more gauges than my Defender. <laughs> <laughs> you got three pedals. Yeah. You've got a four-speed box. Yeah, it's a four-speed manual, so need a clutch. What's um? What are these up here? These are like warning lights. So one is like main beam when you've got your headlights on, and the other is ignition. So when you've got your key turned, it lights up. So you know it's on. Yeah, you don't drain your battery. What's that pull? That's the fan switch that turns the electric fan on and off <laughs> and then this one here that's the headlights so you've got like side lights dip beam and then main beam yeah noticed this earlier that is wood yeah originally these were 
like nail together. Yeah, like so wooden frame, isn't it? all these joins, there's wood, there was wood up in the roof and it was just nailed together by wood pretty much. I like that you've kept a little bit of it. Yeah, so there's some there and there's also a little bit oh, yeah. there still. But the rest of it we had to get rid of because it was something to catch fire when you fire hazard, up the yeah. <laughs> There's like a million details that we're missing, but if you have any questions, then follow Rick on Instagram there. Yeah. I'll Drop him a DM, out. ask him some questions. Even if you need help with anything, I can try and share what knowledge I've got. He's a smart, smart boy, Rick is. I mean, you built this in three years. Yeah. You've done this quicker than I've done a suspension refresh on my E36. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> 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 My God. hurt my ears. That was sick. You got earplugs in. <sighs> <laughs> it sounds nice. How loud is it? Mental. <laughs> Will I? Yeah. First passenger, eh? Ready? Yeah. <laughs> it's so loud. I'm not even joking, I am. That is. That is blowing my socks off. It's like a sensory overload. Fuck. <laughs> What's it like? I feel like I've just had like an out of body experience. No. Am I getting it? I'm flabbergasted. Honestly, insane. Oh god, get out of there! <laughs> I can't hear anything. Yeah. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> The coolest car I've ever been in. Yeah. Mental, isn't it? Mental. <laughs> Ricky, I don't know what you've built. You built a monster. <laughs> it shifts, mate. <laughs> it's quick, isn't it? It's the fact there's no seat belts as well, so you're literally like, we could die any second. Yeah, what do you reckon? That is probably the gnarliest experience in a car ever. Yeah. I said it was like, it's like a sensory overload. It like attacks you. Now, I can't tell. It's just it's carnage. Scary. Yeah. Yeah, you've built a cool car there, Rick. Thank you. It's rapid as well, isn't it? It goes yeah. so well. It pulls in it. It's that NA power, isn't it? Just yeah. Run, you but you can, can I feel what you mean with the road when it's like, it dances a yeah, bit, doesn't it? It's yeah. like, but I kind of like that. It's the sketchiness of it. Yep. You built a car. I built a car. An mm, absolutely nothing. savage car. Yeah, it's a bit of a beast. But yeah, if you want to follow Rick, that is his Instagram there. He posts lots of hot rod stuff. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, give him a follow. Silly, silly car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll yeah. see you in the uh, in the next video. Drop us a comment down below and you'll win one of the t-shirts and cheers for filming, Rick. Peace. Cheers for building a cool car. Peace. All right, see you in a bit.